Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible class. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, for our Bible class. As always, we, we pray and hope that you have had a wonderful, a blessed day. And uh, regardless of what has went on, what has happened this day, uh, this, this day was a good day. Uh, and the reason it was good is because God's word said it was good because this is the day that he has made and everything that God made is good. We, we learned that early on uh, in the Bible that everything that God made was good. And so he made this day uh, in spite of the obstacles, trials, tribulation we had to go through. It still was a good day. Uh, so we thank God for we thank God for another opportunity to be able to uh, study his word. And so, as always, we thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to get into our lesson. So let's pray. Father God, it is again in your son Jesus name, Lord. We come first and foremost, as always, to say thank you. Thanking you for this day. Thank you for all that you have already done in this day. Right now, Father, as we get ready to study your word, we first and foremost invite your presence, the Holy Spirit, which is our teacher. Uh, we pray, Father, right now, Lord, that uh, you will allow us as students uh, to have open hearts, open ears, open minds. Uh, let us yield uh, to the teaching of your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can uh, be better uh, Christians. We can be better disciples. Uh, we can be better uh, soldiers and representatives for the kingdom of God. And so uh, I pray right now for everyone who is on. We pray for those who will join us. Uh, we just pray, Father, that your son be glorified uh, through this lesson. So we just thank you. We love you. And we ask this in your son Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, last week we started a new uh, topic. We've been talking. We we in the book of Second Samuel, and I, I started off with asking a question. Uh, and my question was, why is it uh, so hard for us to take accountability? Uh, why is it that when we have uh, been caught in sin, or when we have fallen into sin, uh, why is it that uh, rather than us uh, taking accountability, rather than us uh, uh, repenting? Uh, rather than uh, just accepting that uh, we have sinned, uh, we try to justify it, we fight back, we kick against it, we say people are judging us, uh, but the reality of it is is, is that if someone uh, is letting us know that we have sinned, we have done something against God, then we should not see it as someone judging us, we should not see it as uh, someone uh, trying to tear us down, but we should see it is that God is trying to correct us. Amen. That's all chastisement is. Uh, it is correction. God wants us to be uh, on the straight and narrow. And so uh, when he chest, the Bible says he chastises those whom he love. And so, uh, uh, so we talked about last week, we talked about David and David is the example that I wanted to look at uh, as far as what happens uh, when we are uh, when we when someone addresses us about our honey when someone addresses us about our sin uh, when someone uh, calls us out uh, on our shortcomings uh, David shows us the proper way to handle it versus how we as a society today how we handle it and so uh, we know who David is David was just as uh, son, he was his youngest son. David was anointed at a young age to be the king of Israel, uh, God's chosen king. We know his lineage, uh, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, uh, would come through the lineage of David. And so David, the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. David was a, uh, a, a, a man chosen specifically by God. But as I said last week, even though we are chosen by God, it does not mean that we won't fall, we won't slip, we won't sin, uh, and it does not mean that God cannot use us. The only way God cannot use us if we remain in our sin, if we don't try to correct our sin, if we try to justify our sin, if we try to uh, push it off on somebody else and talking about how you judging me versus actually looking at ourselves, then God can't use us. He wants to use us. He needs to use us because we are in our last days, my brothers and sisters. And so, so we talked about David. Uh, we talked about uh, in the second Samuel, the 11th chapter, how David, when it was a time for war, the Bible says that the kings were off at war with their men. Amen. But David stayed behind. And we talked about how when we are uh, out of out of the way of our duty, we find ourselves in the way of temptation. I said when we are out of the way of our duty, we find ourselves in the way of temptation. In other words, when we are 
uh, have a responsibility and obligation, even say as men, if, if I am a father, if I am out of the way of my duty uh, to raise my sons and my daughters, if I'm out of the way of that duty, then I am in the way of temptation. And not only just me, but everything that is attached to me. Amen. And so now my children are at, at, at a disadvantage. My children are open and susceptible to temptation from the adversary because I have not taught them how to be a responsible man. I have not taught her how to be the woman of God. Same thing with, with, with mothers. If we are out of the way of our responsibility to our daughters, then we find ourselves in the way of temptation. Now they feel like their bodies uh, can be utilized and used by every Tom, Dick, and, and, and Charlie that comes along. And so we have to be, same thing with preachers, men of God, women of God. When we are out of the way of our responsibility, our assignment, when we are out of the way of that duty, then we open up and, and, and put ourselves uh, in the way of temptation, us personally and those who are attached to us. So, so David was out of the way. David was where he should not have been. And he found himself seeing Bathsheba, uh, Uriah's wife. And we know the story as we talked about that. I want to go all the way through it because I won't get to the day's lesson. But, but David slept with Uriah's wife and in him sleeping with her, she became pregnant. And in, she let David know that she was pregnant. And so rather than David uh, fess up to it right then, take responsibility to it, of it right then, he was the king, uh, amen. He, he was the king and so he, he's the king. So he first and foremost, as the leader, as the king, he should have done it. Secondly, the king in those days had all authority. All They had the power. Well, what was anybody going to do to the king? So, so, but rather than do that, what was correct, David decided to cover it up and hide it. And so the, we, we got to last week where uh, David had called Uriah. That was, this is Bathsheba's husband. He has called him home from the battlefield. And so David's plan is to try to get Uriah to go in and sleep with his wife. And then uh, 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 Uriah will think that the baby that she's pregnant with is his. And we talked about how that goes on even today, that that is a relevant topic today. How many people are, are raising children that are not theirs, that they think are theirs. So, so this happens, so it's nothing new. But what we need to do is when we know it's not right, we need to fix it, we need to address it. And so, so now David calls Uriah home. He tries to get Uriah to go and sleep with his wife. Uh, but the Bible says that Uriah slept at the king's door. He, he stayed at the palace. He did not go home. David sent meat, sent everything for Uriah to go home, but he did not. He stayed at the palace. Amen. And he slept at the door. And the next day, uh, David uh, said, Uriah, why didn't you go home? Amen. And I think that's what we got down to 11. And Uriah told him that the ark, that's the presence of God. Uh, the men, of uh, uh, my fellow comrades, my fellow men at arms are at war and they're sleeping in tents. Uh, and I cannot go in and lay with my wife and eat this meat that you have given me and just act like uh, my brothers are not in a, 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 a position of, 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 of not being comfortable and I'm here being comfortable. David said, you're right. He said, I can't do that. He said, as long, he said, as, as thou livest and as thy soul lives, he said, I will not do this thing. And so we're going to pick up right there. Okay. All right. So verse 12 says, and David said to Uriah, okay, his first attempt didn't work. All right. First, we know he slept with Uriah. He sinned, committed adultery. Amen. She's pregnant. Okay. Now he's moving into the act of, of, of conspiracy, of covering up his sin. He's trying to cover it up by getting Uriah to sleep with her. Okay. So now David says, he tells Uriah, okay, well, just stay here another day. I want you to stay another day and then I'm going to send you on back to war, okay? So this time, David gets him, verse 13 says, and when David called him, he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk. So now David is now going to uh, intentionally make Uriah drunk, get him drunk, because we know when we are drunk, amen, when we are not in our right faculty, then we tend to do things that sometimes we don't remember. And so David said, well, if I can't get him in a clear mind, to go and sleep with his wife. I get him drunk and he'll go and sleep with his wife. So now David is purposely causing another man to sin. And, and, and folks talk about drinking and is it a sin to drink? No, it's not a sin to drink. It's a sin to get drunk. Amen. It's a sin to take on too much 
where you are now not in your right mind, where you can't function and operate. And so now David intentionally gets him drunk. Now he is causing Uriah to sin. And what does the Bible say to us about causing others to sin? He says, whoa, Jesus, the Bible says, woe unto them. If you cause anyone else to stumble, especially the little one, he talks about the children, but it applies to all of us. If we intentionally cause someone to sin, we know consciously what we are doing is causing someone else to sin. The Bible says we are being a stumbling block to them. And that is a dangerous thing. Jesus says, matter of fact, it'd be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and go throw yourself in the ocean and drown yourself. It's, it's better to drown yourself than to cause someone else to drown. Amen. But how dangerous it is, and that's what we do. We, we, we are so flippant with our sin nowadays that we don't even take into account that what I'm doing uh, or am I promoting sin for somebody else to sin? And so when I promote this sin and they engage in it on my behalf, then I'm causing them to stumble. And that is a dangerous place to be with God. The Bible says it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of a living God. We, 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 we don't fear man. We don't fear the police. We cuss the police out. We cuss our parents out. We cuss our job. We, we, don't, we, we, we have an attitude that we are invincible, that nobody can stop us. You can't out talk me. You can't make me do what I don't. All this stuff. But the Bible says it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And our God is a living God. He's a God who can take your breath right now if he wants to because it's his breath. He can put you in a, or allow a situation to happen to you where you'll find yourself on the back for the rest of your life in a vegetative state. We don't want to play with God and fool with God and tempt God. The Bible tells us, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't play with God. So all I'm saying is, now David, his one sin is leading to another sin. That's why when we know we have sinned, when we know we are in sin, we better try to get out of it as soon as we can because all it's going to do is cause us to commit another sin. And when we commit other sins, when we commit another sin, nine times out of ten, it's going to involve someone else. Therefore, we are causing someone else to sin. How dangerous that is. So David said, I'm going to get him drunk. If I get him drunk, He'll go home and sleep with it in. All right. So, so the Bible says, and it came, and, and it came, let me see. 13. And David said, uh, he called him, he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, he went not down to his house. So the Bible says, even though Uriah was drunk, even though he was drunk, he still said, I'm not going home. He still said, I got enough integrity that I'm not going to go and sleep and be comfortable when my brothers are uncomfortable. If my brothers and sisters, when we are at war with each other, then we ought to be at war or not with each other. When we are in battle together, then we ought to be together in battle. Amen. I shouldn't see you suffer on the battlefield or I shouldn't see you take a hit on the battlefield and I don't react or I don't do something. I shouldn't want you to suffer and I'm comfortable. Amen. So David, I mean, you're right. I said, I can't do it. I won't do it. So now David is, uh-oh, okay, well, I can't get him to go and sleep with her. So now David commits, I think, which is almost worse than the adultery. And, and I'm not putting adultery over his what he's finna do next, but I'm just saying, if you think about it, he, he could have, he could, and I'm, I, I say he could have, because the Bible says when you fall, we fall. Sometimes we don't intentionally set out to sin. Sometimes we actually fall into sin. So that's, it's one thing to fall into sin. It's another thing to fall into a temptation, but it's a whole different animal when you plan to sin. It's a whole different animal when you plan to hurt someone. It's, it's totally different. So that's why I said what he's about to do, I, I think, is just a little worse than the actual act of adultery. So now here's what David does. 
So David said, okay, I can't get him that way. So David says, the Bible says 15, he wrote a letter. 15 says, and he wrote in the letter. Well, I'm sorry, let me go to 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab. Joab is David's captain of the army. David, I mean, Joab is the captain of the army. De uh, Joab is the one commanding the troops. So while David is at home, Joab is in charge. So David writes a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Lord have mercy, y'all. Look, look, look at this. Lord, because those who know the story know what's coming. But David writes the letter. He writes the, 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 the hit. Let's call it a hit. The murder hit. He's hired, it's, it's like he's hiring a hit man. He writes the letter that will ultimately cause Uriah to lose his life. And he gives the letter to Uriah to deliver to his executioner. Man, if that ain't cold-blooded, that's cold-blooded. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to have you murdered. And I'm going to write the murder order and let you transport it to the one who's going to murder you. Woo. And we do those same type of things, my brothers and sisters. We cold with our sin. We are. We don't care who we murder. We, 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 we talk about people. We set people up. We, 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 we act like everything is good. And we sending them right to their death. Maybe not physically, but spiritually, we're trying to send them to their death. We're trying to send them to their demise. We're trying to send them to the trap. And we are, and they are carrying our order of destruction. And all the time we patting them on the back. All the time we praising them. But they don't know they're carrying a death, a, 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 a hit letter that I wrote to kill you. So David sent this letter by Uriah to Joab. And so the Bible says in 15, and he wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. Whew. <laughs> he says, set Uriah in the front of the battle. He said, in the hottest place of the battle. Look what he says. And then he says, and retire ye from him. In other words, put him out there in the hottest battle, but then pull back from him so he's out there by himself. Man, man. Ooh, look at David, y'all. Look how his sin of adultery has caused him to move into getting a man drunk, plotting a man's murder, and devising, scheming, masterminding how he'll be killed. He told you, Joab, you put him in the hottest place in the battle. You put him right up there. And once y'all all up there and you put him there, then y'all pull back so they can kill him. Mm. And so the Bible says, and it came to pass, verse 16, when Joab observed the city that he had assigned Uriah into a place where he knew the valley men were. So in other words, let me go on down. 17, and the men of the city went out and fought with Joab and there fell some of the people of the servants of David and Uriah the Hittite died also. So in other words, because of David's scheme to cover up his original sin of adultery, now he has caused Uriah to be murdered. But not only did Uriah get murdered, but the Bible says, and some of the other men of David, excuse me, fell also. Now, who's to say they would have failed normally in battle or not? We don't know. But, but this I do know. When you're falling back versus going forward or doing whatever you need to do, then you know, so, so we don't know how many other lives, and I'm not trying to add to it. I'm just saying that some other men died also and Uriah was killed. So David's scheme, his murder for hire plot worked. So now Uriah is dead. So now David feels like, all right, I've got it taken care of. He's dead, so there won't be no issue with him. 
David's thinking is, if Uriah is dead, I'm the king. I can have whatever woman I want. Now she's a widow. I'll just take her for myself. And so she'll become, she's already pregnant, but everybody will know then. that. So, so what David in essence is doing is trying to correct his wrong by making all these additional sins against God. My, uh, my, you, my brother, think about it. I, I think about it like this. It's, you think about the prodigal son. When the prodigal son left home and went away and got in the hog pen and he, he disrespected his father, asked for his stuff, left all those things. But the Bible says when he came to himself, he said, I got to go home. He said, for I have sinned against God and my father. I got to make it right. That's all we're talking about. So I say initially, we're we trying to get to the 51st song. We're trying to see how to do it the right way. Right now, David is messed up. Right now, David is all wrong. David is all in left field. But God loves David just like God loves us. And when we get wrong in left field, God can get us back if we want to come back. So but just like the prodigal son, he said, I have sinned against God and my father. See, we, we, don't, under, we don't realize what we do, we think we're just doing something to, to somebody. But the reality is, is that we're doing it unto God. See, look, you, you lie on me or you try to scandalize my name or you try to tear me down my reputation as a man or a woman of God. You, you, are, you are doing it to me. You, you are actually doing it to me, but you are doing it unto God. I may can't fix it, stop it, handle it. But what, what you are doing unto God, he can. So be careful doing to folks because in reality, you are not just doing to that person, you are doing unto God. And when unto, you look it up in the, unto means against. Your sin is against God. You did it to me, but it's against God. That's why Jesus said, what you do to the least of these, he said, you have done also, not to, you have done also unto me, against me. Be careful doing stuff to people who are in line with God who are where God wants them to be, who are calling your sin out and correcting you, and then you're trying to go behind them and tear them down, and you think you're doing something to their reputation. Be mindful that you're doing it to their reputation, but you're doing it unto God. And God got a way of handling those who are against his people. So, all right. So, so now David and got Uriah killed. So now Joab sends word back. Let me get on down here. That's my time for the day. We'll, we'll get on uh, over next week. We, we're getting there, y'all. We're going to 51. Hold on. I'm just, I'm just painting this picture for the story. So the Bible says that, that Joab sends a report back to David on what has happened. He lets David know that your plan has worked. See, didn't nobody know. Didn't nobody know about the original sin except David. Bathsheba, probably David's servants who went and got her and brought her to the palace. And Joab knows now, he doesn't know, he doesn't know about Bathsheba, but he know that David has caused Uriah to be murdered. Think about it. And that's when we sin. Don't you know sin gives you uh, 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 man, what's that, what's that word? A, a paranoid. Sin makes you paranoid because you're looking at people and all the while in your mind, you're saying, I wonder, do they know mm. what I did? It makes you paranoid. David, he knew, a few people knew. But can you imagine him as he don't know if Joab told some more people. So now he's paranoid. He don't know if his two servants told some more servants in the kingdom. It can make you paranoid. That's why 
When we sin, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to repent and get it off of us so our minds can be clear. Our minds can be at peace so we don't have to walk around and wondering who knows that what I did. Jesus. It makes us paranoid. So, so, so David, so Joab sends word back to Job, I mean to David. He lets David know your plan worked. Uriah is dead. He said, but we also lost some other men. Let me get down here. Verse 25. This is what I want y'all to see, Lord. The Bible says, then David said unto the messenger. The messenger brought the message from Joab. And so now David is replying to the messenger. Then David said unto the messenger, thus shalt thou say unto Joab. Go back and let Joab know. Let not this thing displease thee. In other words, don't let the fact that a few men lost the battle and died and that Uriah has lost his life. Don't let that bother you. Now look at David has become so, he's become so engulfed in his sin that he even now has a flippant attitude. His attitude is like, he, I don't even care that Uriah has lost his life. He said, let not this thing displease. Don't worry about it. That's what happens in battle. We lose people. Now he's not even concerned about the life of other people who have been affected. Sin will pull you into a hole that if you don't grab the, the, the rope that God is throwing you to get out of that hole, you'll find yourself so deep in that hole. And I never say you're so deep that God can't get you out. But what I will tell you is the deeper you go in the hole, the more lives you will destroy and the more you're going to have to answer for. Now he's he, now he's not even compassionate about a, a honorable, respectful man who was faithful and served him and died in battle for him and because of him. Man, and this is the sad part. And that's the time I'm gone. This is the sad part, my brothers and sisters. When Saul, hold on, let me. <laughs> Saul, y'all remember Saul was trying to kill David? Y'all remember that? Mm-hmm. Saul was trying to kill David because David was having great battles and all of the victories were coming to David and everybody began to, Saul kills his thousand, but David kills his tens of thousands. And y'all remember and Saul became jealous and tried to kill David on numerous occasions. Saul tried to kill David on numerous occasions. But the Bible says when Saul died, the one who was trying to kill David, David mourned for Saul. David mourned for Saul who was trying to kill him. And the Bible also says that Abner, who was Saul's captain, just like Joab is David's captain, when Saul was killed, Abner, well, when, when Saul was alive, Abner was the one trying to find David to kill David for Saul. But the Bible says in 2 Samuel 1, and in three, when Saul was killed, David mourned. And when Abner was killed, David mourned. Ain't that something? He mourned for the people who were trying to kill him. But a man who was honorable, who was fighting for him, put his life on the line to go on the battlefield for King David and Israel. When he died, he had a flippant attitude. Don't even worry about it. Things happen. Look how callous sin will make you. That you would rather mourn for a person who wanted to kill you and hate you. You would rather mourn for that person than mourn for the person who honored you and served you. That's how we are too. That's exactly how we are too. Because we are playing with sin and sin has made us that we would rather mourn folks who hate us, folks who talk about us, who try to tear us down when something bad happens to them, 
We mourn them and we, we're sorry for them. But the people who stick their neck out for you, the people who've been down for you like 10 toes down and four flat tires, the people who have gave you money, the people who have met you at the hospital, the people who prayed for you, who gave up stuff for you when something happened to them, oh, ain't no big deal. That's our attitude. But a person who, two people who tried to kill David, he mourned when they died. But when Uriah died, ain't no big deal. And the reason why it wasn't no big deal is because he's the one who had him killed. Sin messes us up, my brothers and sisters. That's the time. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. So I'm out. Let me let me say this. And so when when David gets the word, tells Joab, hey man, don't worry about it. It's all right. Uriah died. We lose people. You'll get them the next time. I'm paraphrasing. You'll get them next time. Now David, 16 says, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah had uh, that Uriah, her husband, was dead. She mourned for her husband. 27 said, And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son, the son that he had Uriah killed for. Look at this, and then I'm through. The Bible says in verse 27, But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. <laughs> the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You think your sin is pleasing to God? <coughs> you think the thing that you have done, God is pleased with? The Bible says God is displeased with it. So God is going to give you a chance to fix it and make it right. So God's going to give David a chance. Amen. All right. We'll pick it up next week. Thank y'all <coughs> for tuning in to our Bible class. I pray the rest of your week is a blessed week, wonderful week. Uh, it's hot. Man, it's some kind of hot. Uh, so take, take precautions. Be careful. If you got to work outside, please uh, take your breaks, your water breaks. Uh, Take care of yourself. Heat stroke, heat exhaustion, that stuff is real. And so, uh, we, but we do thank you for tuning in. Uh, I, I pray uh, uh, that God will continue to bless you, uh, that you be safe. And so, uh, thank God for our Pleasant Grove Church family as always. Uh, and as always, we thank God for our extended family members who tune in with us faithfully <coughs> every week to help us. Uh, study and learn God's word. Thank you for tuning in and, and being a part and sharing in our Bible class. And so we're going to have a closing word of prayer and we, prayerfully we'll see you next week. Let's pray. Father God, send your son Jesus name, Lord. We come at the close of another Bible study. Thank you, Father, for what has been done and said. Uh, we pray, Father, that what has been done and said has been uh, according to your word and that it has been pleasing unto you, Father. What we want to do, Father, we want to be in order. We want to be in accordance to your will and your word. And so uh, I pray right now, Lord, that uh, uh, we have received from you uh, on this evening. I pray, Father, that we will take it and apply it. What is applicable to us, those things that are not, Father, we, we don't even have to worry about them. But what is applicable to us, Father, I pray that we take them and apply them to our lives. Uh, I pray, Father, for my church member, Pleasant Road Missionary Baptist Church. I pray for each and every member, uh, those who are uh, able to get on the line, those who are not, those who are uh, bedridden, those who are uh, in hospitals or in bereavement, wherever they may be, Father, you know uh, what they're going through and what they need. And I pray for them, Lord, that you would just touch them, comfort them, uh, deliver them, uh, whatever they need, Lord, I pray, Father, uh, that you would grant it to them uh, if it's according to your will. Uh, we pray for our extended uh, family members, Lord, that you bless them as well. We pray that you just bless everything that is attached to them, Lord. Keep them in uh, good health, good strength, Father. Uh, so that we all can go out and be the disciples that you have called us to be. Uh, Father, we uh, pray for our leaders. We pray for uh, our youth. We pray for our city. Uh, we pray for our servicemen and women, our first responders. Uh, we pray for this country, Lord, those who are in the past of the hurricanes over in the Caribbean. Uh, Lord, bless them. Be with them, Father. Protect and shelter those uh, who are in the path of the storm. We know, Lord, that you are a a shelter in time of storm, Lord. So be that shelter that they need, Father. So uh, we thank you most importantly for your son, Jesus to Christ, and uh, all.
all that he has done for us. And so we love you, Lord, uh, and we thank you. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.